Welcome to DDL's Pack Review Series. My name is Pete Johnson. With me today I have Scott Levy. Scott is DDL's lead packaging engineer with over 20 years of medical device testing experience in the industry. Scott, today we're going to talk about uh, ASTM F88 seal strength testing. Sure. Um, basically on a high level, what, what is seal strength testing? Seal strength testing is nothing more than a uniform weight to understand the strength of separating two materials. For example, a pouch package that one side is Tyvek, one side is poly, a medical device manufacturer sealing these two materials together or forming a bond, and they're trying to understand what strength it takes to physically open that package. Um, why would we use this test? Why, why is it important? Probably the most critical element is consistency, and we'll probably talk about consistency and repeatability a little bit more as we start talking a little bit further about FEDA, but that's the key aspect. It's important for the medical device manufacturer to understand what type of strengths uh, they're putting on a particular package. For example, if they put a package out into the field that has eight pound seal strength, it means it's gonna take eight pounds to pull this package apart. When this package gets into the emergency room or you know, right before it goes in the operating room, they're gonna struggle to get this package pulled apart. On the flip side, if they're not, if they're not sealing it enough, they could potentially be causing areas within that package for sterility breaches, meaning this, you know, they're physically not forming uh, a seal. So it's pretty critical to understand what type of strengths you're getting from your process. And from there, then you can make a determination and set a specific spec that you're looking, you know, to adhere to. Now within the standard, there are three techniques. Could you speak a little bit about the different techniques? Sure, there's a technique A, which is unsupported, meaning that the seal itself is the thin portion is kind of floating in space. That's technique A. Technique B is where people, you can actually hold it as a supporting function, which nobody utilizes. Technique C is another supported method, but that's using a rigid plate. Uh, between uh, the three procedures, we primarily run technique A and technique C. Uh, one thing to uh, keep in mind though, for consistency again, whatever you choose to utilize, whether it's technique A or C, you want to stay with that because your data is going to change if you try to intermingle them. And would the same apply to the different rates that are available or suggested? Within Absolutely. The within the standard, uh, the separation rate you can have be between 8 and 12 inches per minute. And you can really choose whatever you'd like, you know, within that range. But the key again for overall consistency is you want to choose one and stay with it. Because if you get any variability with your seal strength at all, you want to be able to home back. You know, if you change this aspect, this aspect, this aspect, from what you previously have done, well, now you've inherited some noise, right? Now you got to figure out what you or what variables you changed, and that'll probably end up telling you whether there's a problem with your seal strength or not. So, in essence, for consistency, stay with a specific speed rate that you're comfortable with. Again, it's between eight and twelve inches per minute. Typically, DDL will, will use eleven inches per minute unless the customer specifies something different. Um, with Regarding the equipment, what are some important things to consider uh, with the equipment used to perform these types of tests? Well, you need a tensile tester, and that's pretty much key. And there's a lot of different manufacturers and vendors out there for tensile testing equipment. Uh, the tensile testing equipment needs to be calibrated, but the biggest aspect that I run in with customers is the load cell. All right, DDL typically uses, I think it's between an eight and 10 pound load cell. And when I'm working with customers and their seal strikes are kind of way all over and things don't make sense, that's probably the first thing I'll hone in on, is that load cell. If they're using a 100 pound load cell, they're gonna have noise, which in essence, their data is not gonna be, I guess, as true as it could be. So when you're doing tensile testing, or you know, for seal strength testing, I guess you could say, you're gonna want a lower load cell, a 10 pound load cell, eight to 10 pounds, more than sufficient. Um, does this mean anyone can just uh, do this test? Well, they can. they can, anybody can go out and buy a uh, tensile tester and execute. FADA testing, but the key thing uh, with all of this is, uh, you know, the load cell is important, the piece of equipment being calibrated, and then for the standard itself, running a test method validation. You know, the repeatability, repro reproducibility is a critical factor, and I think that a lot of people uh, don't quite understand that just because it's an ASTM standard, mean or doesn't mean that you need to do your own test method validation. You know, within these standards, there's a precision and bias stamp or precision and bias statement, and you're trying to meet that. For example, if you have five or six different technicians that are doing this testing, 
you want to ensure that all five and six technicians can get the same data. And you know, running that test method validation is pretty critical to understanding if you're going to get consistency through using seal strength testing. And what, what are some of the biggest issues you run into with your customers regarding this test? Primarily the biggest issue is uh, manufacturers setting a one pound minimum spec. And they don't know where that one pound minimum spec came from. Uh, minimum specifications for seal strength have derived from process validation testing. Okay, when you're setting up a process validation, you're trying to understand your low, your non-low, and your high. Based upon the data you get from there is where you're going to set your process spec. Okay, how much strength is it going to take to pull this apart? That's probably one of the biggest issues we run in with customers for seal strength testing. The second biggest issue we run with customers is using technique A versus technique C. You know, we talked a little bit earlier on technique A will give you a result, technique C will give you almost two times that result. So if somebody's used to seeing really high values and they use technique A and they see lower values, well, there's the problem. And when you're trying to compare apples to oranges, it doesn't work very well. So the consistency aspect of the speed rate, the technique that you run, as well as understanding what your minimum spec's going to be, is gonna help you tremendously in getting the data correct for seal strength testing and giving you the correct output that you're looking for. Perfect. Thank you for your time today, Scott. I'd like to thank all the viewers for watching. If you would like more information on DDL's Pack Review Series, please visit our website at www.testedandproven.com.